This is Carl Schlierman. I am a solutions consultant with Beyond 20, and today's video will demonstrate a single form survey that has been built and customized to allow you to make changes to the actual survey itself without the need to publish a blueprint. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new incident And I'm going to go ahead and run a one step that is going to automatically close that incident, which will then trigger the automation process to go ahead and generate the survey itself. We have a tab down on our form arrangement where we're going to display the customer satisfaction survey. So as soon as that automation process kicks off, you'll see that we have the survey generated here. And this is essentially what that single form survey looks like. We give it a ID number, and then we have some rated questions that are displayed, as well as some short answer questions. And so how we made this module was that each one of these questions uh, is stored in a stored value. And so instead of making changes to the form itself in your admin client and then publishing the blueprint to show the change text, uh, you can simply go into your admin client and you can modify any one of these stored values that we have in the global survey folder. So, for example, if I open up this rated Q1, which is our first question, you'll see that this is the text behind what is displayed on our survey here. And if I was to go in here and I'm just going to add some additional te text to the question in the stored value, I can simply click OK to save the changes to that stored value come back in and then at this point I need to create a new survey. We'll go through the same process and close out this incident automatically and now the text will be updated in our survey that's being generated. It's important to know that if we make changes to those stored value questions that it won't apply to any of the surveys that have already occurred in the past. It'll just uh, display on any new surveys that are created. So I have the automation process and now it's ran and now you can see that we have the additional text here after our question. So in addition to uh, having each question as a stored value, I've also placed these uh, labels for the uh, survey responses as a low response, a medium response, and a high response. So if you don't want to display not satisfied or satisfied, maybe there's different terminology you want to use, that's configurable as well in these three stored values. You also have short question one, two, and three these are the open-ended questions that are optional on our survey form. So you have your question one here, two, and three, and you'll have the ability to go ahead and modify the text that's displayed for these questions. You're not gonna be able to change the actual type of survey question. So these are gonna be rated, these are gonna be short answer, but you at least have that flexibility to go ahead and change what type of question you wanna ask in those particular uh, areas. So once again, once you apply the MMAP, you can simply go into your admin client under settings, go into open stored values manager, and then browse in the global folder under survey, and that is where we store all of these particular uh, stored values. Um, additionally, the uh, other stored value that I haven't discussed is the survey title. Now, this survey title stored value uh, simply right now just says customer satisfaction survey. 
that's the title that we display to customers on the portal. So as we have the survey generated on a closed incident, an email is created and sent to the requester. That email looks something like this. And this email is very uh, basic in nature, but it essentially is sent to the requester and it thanks them for their incident service request and, and the number uh, that was recently closed. And then it has a link on here to take the survey. So then at this point, you can go ahead and click on the take survey link and it will take the user to your portal and more specifically to the survey that we have on the portal. It is important to note that in order for this survey to uh, just automatically open, you do have to have your environment set up where you do automatic authentication uh, using the pass-through credentials. For this example, I'm still getting prompted to enter my credentials for ShareWell, but in a, a real-world application, your portal should be set up to do automatic pass-through credentials, and it'll take them directly to the survey that you have uh, set up. So that is why I have the login box here. But once you get logged in, this is what you're gonna see. And as I mentioned earlier, the uh, title stored value is simply this text here that is displayed on the survey that our customer can see. So if you wanted to change the title or text that's displayed there, you can do that simply by changing the value in the stored value. At this point, your customer can go through and fill out the survey. Uh, it is important to note that unless it's an optional uh, question, they are required fields. So if I try to submit this, it's just going to tell you that you need to make sure that all the rated questions have a response. And all of the rated questions are simply the uh, radio buttons that indicate whether or not we're uh, satisfied or not. So I can come in here and just go ahead and make my selections on the required fields. And then once I have that done, I can go ahead and submit the survey. You'll see a little pop-up thanking the customer for their feedback. And then it'll automatically return to my portal default. Now that the survey has been filled out and completed, I return back into my rich client because now I want to see these fields and values actually get updated with uh, the returned results. So I can go ahead and refresh my incident. And now you'll see that we have responses in this survey that capture the selection that I made on, uh, on, on the survey. Additionally, we have a calculated survey score. So each one of these questions has a rating between one and five, and we simply take the number that's associated with the selection and we divide it by five to give us the average score. The short answer questions are, are not scored, uh, so we don't take them into account for this scenario. Additionally, I do want to show a little bit more in the admin client on this particular form and, and show you a little bit more of how it's built in order for you to potentially make some changes to the form itself in a blueprint where you would have to publish that if that is what you need. So to access the customer survey form, you would go into your blueprints and you'd create a new blueprint. Now the survey form is a supporting object to our incident. And so under supporting, we have the customer satisfaction survey. And if I go ahead and edit the form here, you'll go ahead and see that this is our survey form. Uh, these are all the, the radio values that we have with our text. And then um, we have uh, expression here that simply uh, shows our score or it shows that there are not any survey results. 
So if you need to make any changes to the form itself, you can simply make these changes to this form and that will be uh, represented in the rich client as this particular form has both a default view and a portal view because we want to show our customers in the portal a little bit different items such as we want to put a submit button there so that they can submit the uh, the survey form once they fill it out additionally we have some pieces that are, are built in so that if the customer fills out the survey and let's say they click on the link in their email again which takes them back to the same survey that they just filled out we don't want individuals to fill out multiple surveys we just want it one and done uh, you can only complete a survey one time so if I was to go ahead and click on this completed survey it would take me back into the portal and it locks down the survey so you can't make any changes to it and it also gives you a, a line that say, states that the survey has already been submitted by the person that completed the survey and it gives them a date time stamp of when that was completed so that way once they submit it the forms locked down no changes can be made and it doesn't allow them to change the survey or to continue to submit another survey now that we have our survey completed I want to show you a simple dashboard that we have set up to demonstrate the survey results as a whole so you can go into your dash dashboard manager under global uh, under the dashboard folder there'll be a, a survey folder and in there we have a survey dashboard that has been created when you open up the survey dashboard, uh, you'll notice that we have a few number widgets here uh, where we display the number of completed surveys. We'll also display the average score for surveys, both uh, on incidents and service requests. So we break those two down into separate widgets. We also have an overall score of both incidents and service requests that show the average score in a uh, in a, in a graphical uh, representation. We also have this section here where you can have surveys to follow up. Once again, if we go back and take a look at uh, our, our survey, if we take a look at our survey again, there was a question in there that specifically asked if they want a member of the help desk to contact the customer and discuss the experience. And so, if this yes option is selected our dashboard will simply query those responses and populate this widget with those particular surveys where the customer would like to follow up and then our final widget at the bottom is just all of our completed surveys uh, in the system uh, regardless of whether it was done through an incident or a service request uh, there are no limitations on this it's just going to display everything in a grid and you'll be able to see it all and so that is a, a very basic survey dashboard that we have created for this single form survey